All right, so I love metalcore, and I have for many, many years now, but as a whole, the genre has had a large problem for a long time. The problem is simple. This band... <laughs> ...does not sound anything like this band... And those guys do not sound anything like these guys. The problem with metalcore is that it is way too broad of a genre label. You know, you have bands like Converge, Dayseeker, and Era, all under the same broad banner of metalcore, despite really sounding nothing alike. And in a few minutes coming up, I will give you my redefined metalcore subgenre list. And well, you may ask, well, who cares? Well, I do, and maybe you do. You know, it's hard for newcomers to get into this genre and to be able to find the stuff that they like if under the same banner of metalcore they find a band that sounds completely different. Say if someone is getting into a band like Architects and they see, oh, Architects is metalcore and they go on and, you know, find metalcore lists and playlists, they might find stuff like Converge, you know, Kill Switch Engage which are all great bands, but they don't really sound anything like Architects. So my goal with this video is to try to solve this problem by dividing metalcore into a little bit more subgenres. You know, often with generic metalcore lists, you will find they list all the completely different styles together, and that's fine, but uh, you know, let's, let's give it a little bit more nuance here. If you like nerding out over metal with me, Come join the party and hit me with that sub. I know a lot of people who watch my stuff aren't subbed. Yes, I'm looking at you. So hit that button. Come on, let's go. So if metalcore was like any other subgenre metal, it would already have several sub subgenres of it. Like how in death metal there is brutal death metal, melodic death metal, deathcore, technical death metal, progressive death metal, among many others. Like look at these lists for both death and black metal and then compare it to metalcore, which in my opinion has a much greater diversity of sound than all the death metal subgenres do. Metalcore, by and large, you know, everything is just lumped together under the way too broad banner of metalcore. And most of the time, the only thing that these bands really share sonically is maybe screaming and breakdowns. Otherwise, they sound a lot different from each other. And then what a breakdown is exactly is completely different depending on the person and their definition of a breakdown. So it just becomes a complete mess. We're just going to be done with it. And here is my redefined list of metalcore genres. Keep in mind, all these are under the broader umbrella of metalcore, similar to how, you know, technical death metal is a sub sub genre of death metal, if that makes sense. So the first one is really a label that is already in use, but doesn't get as much as it should be used, in my opinion. We'll go with metallic hardcore. This is the first style of metalcore, which began in the early to mid nineties and probably peaked in popularity around the turn of the millennium. <laughs> In comparison to the other bands, these bands lean further into the hardcore influence than the rest of the metalcore family. Usually these bands are characterized by being extremely abrasive, aggressive, and chaotic. This genre often blends together with mathcore and alternative metal. Clean singing is rarely found here, but of course there are exceptions. Most of the vocal styles land somewhere in the midst of hardcore shouting and hardcore yelling. Although of course bands like Zhao do use Zhao, Zhao. I don't know. Do use a more traditional metal scream, I guess if that's what you want to call it that, which is its own video entirely. So if you want me to make a video on that, on the different types of screaming and vocal styles in metal, just let me know. Uh, bands like this include Converge, Botch, Caven, Norma Jean, Zhao, Early Hatebreed, Shy Halud, Early Early Architects, among many others, and maybe for a more recent band doing the style, take a listen to Vane, Vane FM. Although Vane takes a lot from, you know, alternative metal, new metal, but, uh, you know, very metallic hardcore sound to me. The second subgenre of metalcore will be named melodic core, or melodic metalcore. Melodic core. <laughs> These 
are bands who take the combination of metal and hardcore, but lean further into the melodious sound of metal rather than the all-out abrasive approach of metallic hardcore. These bands often incorporate a lot of melodic death metal influence into their sound, especially in the riffs. You know, it's the classic at the gates core sound, you know, the 0587 yeah, riffs, you know what I mean? These bands often have a mix of singing and screaming, with the screaming much more similar to the approach of melodic death metal bands. These bands have a bit more structure to their songs and less of a free-form approach. This style became very popular in the mid-2000s. The bands typical of this style would be All That Remains, Kill Switch Engage, As I Lay Dying, Silosis, Trivium, Early Parkway Drive, and then for a more recent band, check out Dying Wish. Really good stuff there, which is really bringing back that old melodic core sound. They're Those guys are great. The next style we will talk about, I will call post metalcore. This is where we found ourselves with the explosion of metalcore popularity in the late 2000s, early 2010s. That was very different from both melodic core and metallic hardcore. <laughs> Essentially, these bands take the metalcore sonic aesthetic, think breakdowns, think breakdowns, at the gates, riffs, chaotic song structures, combine it with a more fluid approach of post-hardcore bands, which would include more experimentation with synths, more more willingness to try different things, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So essentially you combine Kill Switch Engage with Alexis on Fire and throw in some of my chemical romance as well. So essentially think combine Kill Switch Engage with Alexis on Fire and maybe throw in some my chemical romance and then maybe throw in some Avicii as well, I guess, <laughs> you know. These bands would often incorporate electronic elements, EDM sections, Synths Galore, Joey Sturge's Tear Production, heavy, seemingly out of place random breakdowns, layered high and low screams, the Jekyll and Hyde vocal approach, you know, auto tuned vocals, nonsensical song titles, maybe some hair and glam metal influence, hip hop, huge clean choruses, and lyrics about being both heartbroken and emotional with a lot of partying as well. On a side note, let's please bring back the EDM dance break. Those are awesome. I love it. Essentially, anything goes here, hence the post-metalcore genre title. Others would maybe dub the style Crabcore, but to me, while the Crab is an absolutely legendary stage move, it really does not give one, it really does not give someone an indication of what this subgenre is. You know, you think Crabcore, you really just think Attack Attack, Stick Stickly, you know, absolutely legendary, but, you know, there's a lot more to it. Here, examples of the style would be Early Asking Alexandria, The Devil Wears Prada, Woe Is Me, I See Stars, and of course, the legendary Attack Attack, as well as bands like Issues. As for recent bands, if you know of a re more recent example, please leave in the comments below, as uh, most of these bands would move on in style to the next subgenre I'll talk about, which I will call Popcore. You know, like, kind of like Popcorn, haha, ha. whatever. <laughs> I often hear this style of metal core dubbed octane core, but you know, a lot of people really have no clue what octane refers to. You know, octane is a serious XM radio channel that plays a lot of metal and hard rock stuff. But uh, I think pop core is a much better description. Essentially, pop core takes the sonic aesthetic of post metal core, but softens it, refines it, and makes it much more radio friendly. And radio friendly is not always used in a pejorative way. I'm not using it in a pejorative way here, more of a just a descriptor of a, of a sound, I guess. Stereotypical elements of these bands, or eras of bands, include much simpler drumming, so way less double kick, less screaming, or in lots of cases, no screaming at all, just singing that is heavily distorted in post-production, usage of synths as main hooks, very simple guitar riffs, and of course, these songs are all built around the vocal hooks. Breakdowns here are often short and maybe completely absent. The use of EDM or hip-hop production is also very common, so think the trap-style drums or the EDM brass synths. You know, this genre is of course controversial, as lots of people who perceive the bands who maybe shift into the style as selling out, but to me, this style of metacore while maybe certainly is not my favorite, can produce some very unique sounding music and often feature some extremely talented vocalists doing some great work. Never mind some really interesting sonic textures and approaches to, you know, 
just how far you can stretch the label of metalcore. Bands I really enjoy who do this style well are Dayseeker, you know, Bring Me the Horizon, who really started this, I think, Bad Omens, Later Architects, and many, many others. This is sort of the new, popular, most active sub-subgenre metalcore, I guess you could say. The last subgenre I will lay out here, I will be calling Gentcore. This takes the low tunings, the seven or eight string guitars, syncopated rhythms, and atmosphere of the jet movement of the late noughties and early 2010s, and combines it with the shorter and more aggressive approach of metalcore. So instead of a long tesseract track full of ambience and genting, we get a shorter, more focused and aggressive track where the genting part is used more of a breakdown rather than momentum to carry the whole song, if that makes any sense to you. Basically melodic core, but instead of being influenced by melodic death metal, it is influenced by gent instead. You know, this was very popular, you know, from 2010 to, you know, 2020. Finn McKinty has the, you know, meme, genting in a colored room. And of course, you know, this is, this is why, right? It's just very popular, it becomes played out. But there are a lot of bands who did a lot of interesting stuff with this. And these bands include Mid-Era Architects, North Lane, In Heart's Wake, Invent Animate, Era, and Is Okay, Make Them Suffer, and many, many others. You know, for bands doing the style currently, Check out Currents and Spirit Box. They're all really some incredible stuff. Really good, really good. So now that we have these sub sub genres defined, we can now begin to properly sort out metalcore as a whole. You know, attach whatever prefix to the sub genres we want. As a whole, for new listeners, this should be much easier and more simple way to navigate themselves through the endless sea of metalcore bands. So instead of saying, oh, I like metalcore, you can say, oh, I really like the sound of gentcore, for example, or I'm more of a fan of the melodic core sound. You know, and of course there are bands that fit more than one, one sub sub genre. For instance, you know, after the burial could be considered both gentcore and melodic core, but of course this is simple, just call them a melodic gentcore band. Alpha Wolf could be considered a metallic gentcore band, for instance. Wage Wars latest could be considered a genty popcore album, and so on and so on. You know, it's like every other metal genre. You have these subgenres, but then you can combine them with others. So, what do you think of this system? I know it's more or less a complete waste of time to be sitting here in front of my computer and trying to, you know, condense metalcore or redefine metalcore. But to me and maybe some other nerds who like to put everything in neat little categories, it is high time metalcore was given the same level of tension other genres like death metal and black metal have gotten. Leave your thoughts down below and maybe give me some examples of some bands in these sub-subgenres I may have missed. Are there any subgenres that, you know, I didn't define here? Do you have any ideas? You know, this is a working hypothesis, right? So maybe I'll make another video later if I get some good feedback from this. But yeah, you know, thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts down below. Cheers.